as well on my channel. I'm going to start the stream literally right now. Uh, I'm streaming to YouTube now, so maybe. Okay. So now we're both streaming. That's going to work well. Okay, so if you could redirect, uh, oh wait, are you streaming on YouTube, Carolyn? It's showing up now on the Evolutional Games YouTube. Cool. Well then I guess I don't have to stream. I'm going to stop mine. Can you people in chat hear me? So you can hear us? Yep, can they hear? Yeah, they can they can hear. Hello. Yay, okay. okay. Well I guess we have to start over. Yeah, um is there a way to make it so that they can see who's talking? Because I don't think they can see right now. Well what what they you'd have to put up the thing um that I had, which was the part of the Discord window with all of our Icons in with the green circles around. Oh, we just want, yeah, you guys can, you guys can see chat just fine because I'm watching the stream too. Anyway, <laughs> um, but you can't see who's talking, and so he's going to do that. Okay. So hi everybody, we're finally working. We're finally confident. All right, so before he has the um, the voice recognition set up, we're just going to start our introductions again. OK, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm on Trusted Life. I'm one of the programmers um, who's been contributing a lot lately. Um, and Trevis, in your turn. All right, I'm Trevi Solion. That seems hard to pronounce. Just call me Sol. Um, and I'm one of the new programmers. I gave a kind of a brief rundown of some of the stuff that had happened, uh, I think, about a week or two ago. And i am been mainly working on uh, the con control controls of the keyboard re recently. Controls of the microbe, yeah. Um, I guess uh, Oliver? <coughs> yeah, hello, I'm Oliver. I do sound and other stuff for Thrive, and apparently I can't stream properly. And I also mess up time zones. So <laughs> this is going great. This is a great day for me. Uh, who's next? You want to introduce themselves? Uh, I'm Hyhylainen. I'm the programming team lead currently. And uh, I've been working on the engine change. Yeah, but I've been working on the engine change as well for the most part. I've been working with the engine change. <laughs> All right, redacted. Bad Omen, are you there? Yes, I'm just eating a banana. Um, so I'm Bad Omen, and I oh, am God. sound and eventually programming. Sorry, you are sounding very distorted. Yeah, you sound robotic. Oh no. More technical difficulties. Ooh. That's fun. What chat are we all okay, yeah. Well we've we've improved from having one person able to talk to all but one <laughs> person able to talk, so <laughs> Yes. Uh Progress. Such progress. <laughs> I'm, I'm now just going through and updating all the links I posted everywhere because they've changed because YouTube is silly. Because we we stopped streaming and then had to start again. All right, so let's, I had a bunch of copy link. All right, so one of the cool, um, we, one of the good things about the engine changes that we've had an opportunity to fix bugs that were existing in three point three, like the um, like the microbe color is not working and the microbe organelle color is not working and such, and we've actually fixed that. And so, bam, I'm gonna post a bunch of screenshots. Um, 
it randomly chooses a color uh, saturation and uh, and transparency for the membrane and it um, and then it desaturates the membrane um, 75% so they all look a little bit desaturated and it looks really nice. You just need to get the organelle rotation as uh, right and then it will look as it should do in the final game except for maybe the compound clouds not being there. Yeah, I'll probably work on that today. Yeah, and compound <clears throat> we've had some issues like the compound clouds, right? Yeah, and the, the compound clouds currently aren't working properly. They're yeah. spawning, but they're not working properly. But yeah. um, other than that, like, Kyrolyn, if you can explain what, like, what you did before. Uh, about what? what? Where we are on the engine. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got almost a cell stage working now. Only the compound clouds and uh, the AI and a few of the other smaller things like engulfing need to be done and then we can do the editor and uh, basically everything is working at that point. Uh, so I saw someone had asked like uh, when they expect like that they can play uh, Thrive again. Uh, uh, what's our kind of current uh, timeline for that? A couple months? Uh... I totally missed that question. <laughs> oh, um, so I saw somebody early on in the chat was wondering when um, you were going, when like, you know, they're going to be able to play Thrive again, you know, with the new engine change. And so I guess like um, any thoughts on like, you know, when that, when that's probably going to be, when the game's going to be playable again? I hate estimating release dates, but maybe a month or two. What do you think, Carolyn? Uh, yeah, that's what I've been saying. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. They. I don't think they had heard us earlier. And, but yeah. So. Just want to make sure we answer that question. <laughs> Although, do bear in mind that programming time estimates are always completely wrong. Yep, so. of course. <laughs> Maybe this is just going to be the early April Fool's and, you know, I'm just not in it and they're going to, like, you know, release it tomorrow, but no. Can you can you mod me on the, the Revolutionary Games chat so I can link the Discord? Uh, yeah. I think... Hold on. I'll find one of your comments. Although I need to sign out and go sign back in as Revolutionary Games to do it, so give me a moment. Talk amongst yourselves about something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Nicola, I just saw... Uh, yes, we do have a romance, and that is one of the things we're going to be talking about. Uh, some of the changes we're also planning for the future releases and such. Yeah, we're also working on... We, um... We have a few. We have a few fun ideas for what release four point is going to look like, and I don't know if we want to talk about that now, or if we want to talk about that later, or if we're going to wait until we actually release to talk about the stuff we want to add. That. Yeah, I mean, like all we've kind of really been doing is just for the most part re-implementing features. So you know, um, and technically, uh. There is a way for people to play that. Uh, if, uh, I think Oliver discovered, like, if you were just to take the uh, bin file, like, if you go to, like, the development forums and look at, like, the micro control scheme, uh, one of the latest links I provided was, like, a zip file. If you unlink that, I'll give you a folder. And if you replace your current bin folder in the launcher, then that should let you play the current state of the game, at least up to, up until about days ago so yeah i was surprised that worked to be honest because i expected it to have issues with miss missing files and other folders but apparently not yeah it works uh pretty well um one other thing that i've been recently working on is differentiating biomes a little bit more so now there's um there's code in place um 
that work once we edit our material shaders. Um, and that uh, that adds specific lighting to each biome. So like the abyss will be darker, the um, the volcanic vents will be have a reddish hue, um, stuff like that. So that's gonna be pretty fun, I think. Make things a little more atmospheric. Mm -hmm. Also, we'll have we we'll won't have our bright cells inside of the um, <laughs> the abyss anymore. Until we add bioluminescent organelles, of course. Yes. Uh, someone's asking, can you describe the new control scheme? That might be a good thing to talk about. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll be on me since I'm the one that's kind of been the main one pushing for it. Um, so, uh, to describe kind of like the old system, uh, you of course, you know, you move your mouse and then your microbe exerts torque, uh, essentially force uh, to try and turn towards that. And and the exerts more torque the farther away from her, and then W and S, of course, go forward and backwards, A and W strife left and, and right. Um, I kind of felt that was a little odd, so I've been working on a alternative scheme where instead uh, A and D cause the micro to rotate, and then Q and E are instead the strifes, and that way it also opens up the mouse for other things like you know clicking on menus uh potentially like you know targeting where you release toxins um there's opens up some of the ideas to, um so uh any other questions for that about the control scheme uh i mean we can link i'll, I'll find a link and post it to the where you posted that it, that um, folder that you can replace, right, in the game files. So George to um, George to um, answer your question which you asked earlier about um whether micro, whether when a microbe splits it keeps its color. Um, so currently the all the color information is by species. So yes, if if I were to divide, um, my the 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 child cells. Will have the same colors as the parent cells, but there is a I think it's a one in a thousand chance or a one in a hundred chance um, that they split off and form a new species, and um, that new species gets their own color. Um, so we've been we've we've been coming up we've been thinking of alternative stuff like maybe maybe every time you get a new species the color changes just a little bit so you can tell how close. A species is to another by its color, um, so you can tell clades and stuff. Um, um, also, even if it forms a new species, there is still a very high chance it'll keep the parent cell's color. So that way, um, you can actually tell that a species is related to another species by the color already. So, yeah, that'll make it a lot easier to tell what species is what and how closely related they are. Which also means that if you just really dislike a family of species, it, it, we give you the ability to try and figure out how to wipe them out. <laughs> yes, yeah, if you hate a specific clay, you just kill all the cells of that color, I suppose. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, one of the things we're planning on adding is we're going to make it so that uh, Actually, killing cells actually has an effect on that species population. So, how likely you are to find in the wild, and so, yeah. Yeah, there's 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 a bunch of random stuff being discussed in that. Yes. Yeah. So that the first steps towards auto evo, really. Right. Message Which... retracted. Uh, that was fine. Slash kill all blue cells. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, let's not go there. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, um, Zipple Bizopple. Uh, so you can test like the uh, current, um, the, the like the that alternative control scheme and kind of you know give your thoughts on it <coughs> uh, about what you feel versus the uh, what it is in three point four. Um, there's a posted it back in like before as a developer a thing in the microbe on the community forum so you can like post stuff about that there and so any feedback you want to give on it is great 
Guys, we got we got a dislike on the stream. Oh no! No, no. it must have been a blue cell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everyone else has to of... like it to make up for it. <laughs> speaking of the um of cell colors, um, I'm hoping that there'll be time to implement the ability to choose your cell's color in the editor. So. Oh, me, me, me mentioning the dislike has given us another dislike. I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, um, I'll, I'll give it a like. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Finally got the talkers on the stream. Yay! The People colony of cell will be on the first or second stage. That's like end of microbe stage. Like where you start attaching to other members of your species until you can until you become multicellular, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's that's the plan from what I've heard, right? Which is also what the uh, behavior tab is supposed to uh, help you control, right, Oliver? Yeah, the behavior is it's going to allow you to kind of program the AI of other members of your species and also design the agents and toxins that all members of your species, including you, will use. Gotcha. Uh, uh, I saw earlier, uh, Emin asked about uh, whether or not it'd be more scientifically accurate if we start in the prokaryote stage, and I guess the short answer to that is yes, and that is the plan at some point, to make us start at the prokaryote. At some point. We'll get the rest of it done first and then start considering those sorts of things. Zippo's apple is trolling us a little bit. I see three dislikes and a black thumbs down. Does that mean anything? Uh... <laughs> oh, jeez. Yes. <laughs> like and subscribe, everybody. Uh, you're welcome, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Join our Discord. Wait, I'll, I'll link the Discord. Um... Yeah. Join our forums. We have a nice forum, too. It's a very nice forum. <clears throat> it's the best forum. Yes. I'm, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I don't... Okay. I... <laughs> right. So, anyone have any other topics related to Thrive or not? <laughs> I guess. Hmm. Uh... Well, I guess like uh, we could probably talk a bit like you know some of the stuff we're planning doing with the prokaryote stage, like you know, like for instance, um, under the life you're planning on making it so that instead of having just like random bacteria floating around, that those are actual prokaryotic microbes, right? Yeah, microbes, microbes without uh, nucleus, yeah. And then I'm hoping that you'll be able to engulf them like you can engulf any microbe, and then there'd be a chance of unlocking their special organelle. And I was thinking that if I'm going to do that for the bacteria, then I'll just do that for all microbes. So, like, if you um, consume a microbe with a toxin vacuole, there's a chance you get, get a toxin vacuole. Um, yeah, so that's probably more which accurate. is yeah, somewhat realistic, because that's how we think that organelles became part of eukaryotic cells in the first place. Right. Especially in mitochondria. Yeah. So, in a sense, like once we kind of get that, then most of the work will already be done for us to make it so that you can then actually start in the prokaryote stage yourself. Yeah, that's another good idea. There's a lot of good discussions happening on the developers forum, which everyone can look at. Right. Only developers yes. can post there, but... Yes. Lot, <laughs> lots, of, lots of good stuff. We're pl we're planning on rebalancing the um the compounds as well, so that um we you can actually all of who who's more familiar with how we were going to change the compound system? Uh, Nick the Nick would be the one, but he's not here right. today. Yeah, he said he had a busy weekend. So came in for the next release is four point oh, and uh, as we said earlier, uh, maybe a month or two. And to clarify, that will feature a new updated 
engine where should be more stable and more usable more f welcoming to newcomers as we've af as we've learnt with new programmers coming along and being able to create this or, b or build the dev environment a bit easier than they have been in the past yes and then on top of that we'll add a couple of new gameplay features to make it worth people's time who aren't interested in the engine <laughs> i guess we, we <laughs> might actually rebalance once 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 um, someone's working on the editor, we might take the like other people who aren't working on the editor. We probably will rebalance the compounds before 4.0. Assuming we have time. Yeah. Yeah. If, if that's going to take another month, I don't think that's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Um... I, I don't think it, I don't think it would take another month though. I think it's pretty easy. But. We need we need we need new art for the icons and stuff too. So yeah, uh, combat overhaul is something that we'll definitely do because right now we have an issue where the game isn't as fun as it could be, and we think that adding combat would make it a lot more fun. Uh, quite quickly. Audio errors visible, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we won't have audio errors er anymore. We'll have. Oh god, I just realized we had an audio error on our stream. They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Maybe we'll never escape the audio errors. No. God, I, I need to be doing more as the sound team lead then. Yes. <laughs> Zyad rejoined the chat. Zyad, introduce yourself. I guess, uh, so, with the combat overhaul, uh, do we have any, like, uh, uh, concrete ideas on what we want to actually do with that. Um, I, mean, I guess, as always, uh, the community members can always like add suggestions in the community forums for any ideas they have. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're always open to suggestions from the people from the community, and if they're good suggestions, and we feel they'd be uh, they give good suggestions more in future, then we'll ask them to join the dev team. Right. Someone Zyad. asked, "How do you even have combat? In, how do you even have combat with blobs?" It's like, well, stabby stabby, toxy toxy, om nom nom. Yes. That's how it works. Yeah, that there are three methods. You could either release dangerous chemicals, you can stab them with piluses or pili, pili, whatever, uh, or you can wrap yourself around them and engulf them in a hug of love and death. <laughs> Which you'll be doing to lots of bacteria if we get the bacteria rebalanced the way I want to do it. Yeah. Someone uh, keeps Ziad? beeping. Ziad, are you okay? I can... Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, Ziad is having some audio issues, but Ziad is also a programmer. We've gotten lots of programmers pop. We got lots of new programmers, like I'm back. Troublesan is new. There's a bunch of other ones, so it, we we might get it out sooner than we think. Just saying. So I had said it took him two days to set up the old engine and twenty to set up the new one. Uh, <laughs> don't say that in a public place. That's not good marketing. <laughs> That's yes. It took it took me literally a day. Yeah, I mean, it took it, me six hours. So it sounds like yeah. it's. Skein better. Sounds like it's I a mean, Ziad thing. I think Zayed was kind of the the guinea pig in that respect because he was the first one other than Tira Lane to set it all up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. So, um. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess. Uh, okay. So. Uh. With the, some of the compounds, we've been talking about, like, you know, getting rid of some of the compounds and potentially streamlining or adding others, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we plan to make it so that in order to grow, you need ammonia and phosphates. We're going to take oxygen and CO2 out and make them into environment variables that just affect the speed at which those specific organelles work. Oh, by the way, we fixed. We're we're going to have the um, the the um, organelle unlocking fixed as well. So that's so you'll be able to actually have to oxytoxy. Oh yeah, we we plan to replace the oxytoxy 
oxytoxy with an actual compound cloud. Well, a uh, agent cloud. Um, yeah. Okay, Crodnew says we can't hear his ambient sounds anymore, and that's good because I was beginning to worry that his voice was actually a tra uh, truck going past or something, because that's what it sounded like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you shoot it out like it'll look like a compound cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, people are saying Darwin had a good question. What was Darwin's Darwin. question? Darwin. Uh, Darwin, could oh, you by the way, the question? Darwin. Yeah, I can't see. <laughs> That's a great question. Kranu is a truck. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> well, Kranu has been many things. He was Santa and Corn simultaneously at one point, so... Yes, Kranu is motorized Corn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Darwin, what was your question? Because we're trying to find it. In the meantime, uh, will we see gameplay? Uh, probably not, in the, if you're referring to in this stream. I mean, Hiralainen is currently streaming because I'm incompetent at it, so he could find a way to play it. Oh, okay. Uh, he's wondering, like, uh, could we... So, like, you know how this... there was this Orpedo where you could download um, stuff about what other people create? He's wondering if we'll have something like that and Thrive. Oh, the Thrivepedia. There was a, um, someone... Was that Bad Omen's idea? I believe that was Bad Omen's idea. Bad Omen, you need to... Oh, no? Okay. No. Who's... We have <laughs> some plans for that. Uh, there was something about an in-game encyclopedia. I think it was Mirror Monkey who started the thread on the dev forums. But it's it's been an uh, idea that's around for quite a while. We we need a catchy name for it though, because Thrivepedia is just like ripping off Spore. Yeah. Uh, in-game encyclopedia is boring. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll throw it out to everyone now, both developers and chat people. Give us a name for the in-game encyclopedia in Thrive. By the way, Discord link, by the way. Plants can't be self aware, though. Um, maybe Earth plants can't be self aware. Yeah, I think, I think there's like talks about like that if we did that, then there'd be like limitations or something. I don't know. It's like, but again, well, you can that's... already play as a plant. Like, all you need is chloroplast. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, like, some of that stuff is kind of already, like, potentially at least a year away before we actually get around to actually developing it, so it's... Well, I mean, like, right now in the microbe stage... You can get oh, yeah, I, I, I mean, like, yeah. they're talking about becoming a plant and becoming self-intelligent. Yeah, we'd have to figure out a way to make that gameplay interesting, because it's not interesting to just sit there growing, right? It's literally right. like watching grass grow, and you're playing as the grass. Um, <laughs> I mean, I what? guess you could turn from like t from a plant to something that's still technically a plant, and that it is of the plant family and gets uh, chloroplast, but it and everything else is like an animal. Um, I think that, that um, moves. Well, yeah, you could be like a plant animal hybrid. Right. Like, so that that's how I always used to play Thrive in the earlier releases. The opposite of a fungus, then. Hey, should we? Mm -hmm. Darwin's question. I can see. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're going to get new people in the team after the new release. What will you be looking for after the new engine release? So the same level of programmers, or your filters are lower? Oh. Anyone that's, I, I think we're going to make it a little bit harder to join the programming team, actually. I think that was a thing. Uh, I, I don't think we've really discussed this much, but I don't know. I, I, we'll probably keep around the same level. No reason to change. Mostly yeah, the I, I, Sorry. 
I You'll think need to I submit a work sample, and we'll need to look I at know. the work sample. Yeah. We'll actually enforce the some sample. Yeah, because that's the only real way that we can tell how good someone is. You know, if, if, so, if someone's writing their personal summary and say, hey, I wrote the code that runs a million servers or whatever, and they're saying, and we say, yeah, great, but how do we know? But yeah. That probably wasn't a great example because they gave us a con concrete example. If, if they're saying, hey, I'm an amazing programmer, we need <laughs> to kind of know how amazing. <laughs> No offense to anyone who wants to apply. Yeah, like, for example, we have a new one, a new person, Andras. Like, he's a graduate uh, computer science person, and he made a whole game. Like, and I made a whole game. <laughs> like, a lot of these programmers have made whole games. Oh, that's true. I should link, I should be a good team member and link TJ Wells' game that's on Steam now. Ooh, yeah, that'd be a it. good idea. It's about the the four color theorem, which is a mathematical theorem that states that any map can be colored in less than four colors. And so you can go and visit that there and <coughs> learn about maths, I guess. Anyway, it's good. Continue. Um. I was kind of just looking back, and there's quite a few uh, good suggestions about, like, you know, what you might want to, um, uh, what you might want to, like, do as, like, alternatives to, like, you meet the standard, you become a microbe, you become an animal, you become a human, and you go to space type of thing. That, but, uh, yeah, uh, guys, people in the chat, definitely post these things to the community forum so that we can actually look at these things later. Yes. Yes, go to the community forums. Go there, make activity, be excited about the game. <laughs> make us feel also, like yeah, Ireland worthwhile. is an amazing programmer. He is the best ever in the universe. I'm, like, I'm not even, like, he's seriously super talented. Uh, I'm sure he's blushing right now. <laughs> <laughs> know, it, it, it's true because, you know, you, Harry Lennon has been the only one to kind of keep going, along with Crodno, I guess, but keep going through all the engine stuff and yeah, make the engine. Yeah, he the whole Leviathan engine. Which is like kind of insane. Like when you just kind of look at how many files and dependencies there are, it's just like, dang. Like, all right, Lynn, you have my respect, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've been slacking a bit, Crodno. <laughs> It's fine. I've been I've been take I've been basically substituting for you. Yeah, we we well, you guys, are, the new programmers are around now, so we at least have some new faces to start coding stuff and helping her alone and along with it. Yeah, take some of the more easy stuff off his hands so that he can do all the heavy lifting. Yeah, thanks for letting me. Uh, uh, like stuff that makes me. You're welcome. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should rethink this. <laughs> <laughs> keep complimenting him. We'll keep going. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I no, think it's, it's, genuinely, we are very grateful for it. So yes. Yeah. Like Cradu, Cradu's made the point. Uh, on clouds. Uh, if them. Yeah, would... yeah. Do you think yeah. if we had the creator back who created the compound account in the first place, would his expertise be helpful? I think it would be hand and not the math. Okay, so if if anyone sees the creator out there in the world who is a programmer that used to be part of the team. Tell him to come and help, please. Uh, Zipple Zapple, we're just talking about the stuff we're implementing. <laughs> he says you're getting off track, like literally every podcast. We're surprisingly on track, actually. We've been going properly now for 35 minutes, and we've been talking about Thrive the whole time. 
Yeah, that's, true. That's good going for us. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm kind of surprised we had a track. Sorry? Send help, please. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if we're getting off track, that, that implies that we have a track in the first place. True. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, about um, ATP, about adding random detritus to the game. Um, we, were think I was, we were thinking about that, because we want to differentiate biomes. And so, in the Abyss, I think we could maybe have clouds of ATP. Then that would be our detritus for now. Yeah. Once it's dark, of course. To make sure it is an easy mode. Seems like that could potentially work with, like, the, um, uh, what's it, the prokaryote stage? If you, like... But, Are clouds yeah. of random ATP in the environment something you would see in real life, though? Yeah, no. No, unfortunately not. Maybe just uh -huh. ammonia and phosphate. I know that we had talked about potentially having some different stuff, like, you know, having more glucose in the environment during earlier in the life, uh, especially Nick, the, the Nick was uh, kind of doing all that. Uh, I'd done all the research, so he'd probably know whether or not there was actually ATP in the water at some point or not. Uh, the documentation for Leviathan has helped greatly, um, Darwin. Like, it's good to see actual documentation, because at my job, by the way, I work as a um, co-op, uh, you know, software developer co-op for a company, and they're terrible at documentation, so I end up having to write most of the documentation as I'm trying to rewrite it, and it's a pain. <laughs> Which is also part of the reason I, I don't necessarily want to work on the Thrive engine as well, because <laughs> I'm doing my own stuff. <laughs> But well, we, I, I we would appreciate it. Engine, yeah, I want to work on it, of course. Like, I'm, I'm probably going to submit some pull requests. But, like, that's not the main thing I want to do. Yeah, and it's definitely, like, a lot better to, like, be able to actually look and see, like, not have to necessarily go into the actual source code itself to try and figure out what every single class does. Because that's a pain and takes forever. Also, when I said Thrive, I mean the Leviathan. Like, I'm I'm writing C++ code for Thrive, obviously. <laughs> but, uh... um, so by I the way, we don't use Lua anymore. We use AngelScript. Um, for those who asked about Lua earlier, what's the what's the main difference? Because I still I haven't been able to work it out. Uh. You want to get this one, Harwin? I can answer it, but... I was just going to say, like, the Lua syntax is... is um, the, the AngelScript syntax is much more... is much closer to C++ than Lua syntax. And which makes it easy okay. to write both. I just remember I saw someone on a, an Ask Reddit thread where someone linked to Thrive once, and someone replied, and it was quite a high upvoted comment saying, they're idiots for using Lua bind or something. <laughs> so I, I, don't know, I don't know how much truth there is in that, but people seem to believe it. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe, maybe the reason why that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, also, I guess one thing is like probably part of the reason why uh, the entire the entire game is now just in one bin file, so that you can compile all the AngelScript files, and instead of having to have a separate folder for, <clears throat> with all the scripts. Uh, uh, Zezu, we don't use Lua anymore. The reason we were originally using Lua is because it's easy for people to understand, um, so they could write mods more easily, and so that the scripting can go faster. But, but eh, AngelScript is better. Yes. Yeah, there, there was a trade-off somewhere. Also, it's kind of weird. Chat message is that we're not in the top chat because that guy is. It has more at, much to the dismay of interest. I'm terrible at my apps. Ugh. 
Uh, which chat are you talking about switching? Um, are there more in the live chat? I have. I don't know. There's like untrusted live system. We talk. Find the. I haven't. They're old. Uh, I think they're just a bit older. They're, they're mm -hmm. showing up on the stream for me. I can see them. I see the ones yeah. you're referring to. Oh, I saw that uh, Dutch had asked uh, about uh, whether or not we're going to make different planets different, and I believe that's the uh, plan. Having like some, at least some amount of like differentials between planets. Yeah. Okay. So there was a thing that I was that I I talked about like actually in Discord, um, where we could vary chloroplast color by the type of star that your planet is orbiting. The only real issue with implementing that was communicating to the player why the fact why their chloroplasts are black instead of green. Yeah, because even though that would be a nice thing to do, and you can say, "Oh, there's realism behind that; they've thought about it." It does run the risk of the player wondering what this new organelle is, even though it's the same one. You know, there needs to be some sort of visual, clear visual cue as to what each organelle is, even if it's not realistic. But yeah, I was thinking, like the stars could have like a metallicity. I don't want to get off track, but like you could you could use that to define how much iron is in the water for chemosynthesis, which we're going to be adding. By the way, I guess yeah. your chloroplast is red because science. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like uh, from what I've kind of read, like there is no good reason why chloroplasts are green, even on our plants. It's like. Purple and is actually, actually better. Almost, yeah, it's like, it's almost weird because you're like, okay, the most amount of light that we get from the sun is in the green thing. So you think, oh, well, that makes sense why chloroplasts are green, except then you realize the green means that it reflects all that green light. Hmm. It's just one of the mysteries of the universe. Well, it's not really a mystery. It's okay. So there were there were two different types of photosynthesizing bacteria way, 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 way back. Okay. okay. You had the purple ones, which were at the surface of the water, um, and you had the green ones, which were deeper down. Okay. And okay. they were green because the um, they were in the ocean, which made it harder for them to pick up the specific lights. I don't remember the exact reason, but anyway, something terrible happened, and all the the surface bacteria was wiped out, um, and then. Since the green was still around, they just kind of took over. Yeah. Wait a minute, is are you? Was this a dying off of it, entirely of one color of cell? Because we've touched on this topic already. Yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> you can do this in game. Apparently. Yep. Yeah. Yes. This is a thing. Because, um, as I said earlier, um. When a species splits off, oh, okay, each species at the beginning of the game is assigned a color, okay? Um, and when that when, when a new species is generated from an old species, there's a 1 in 100, 1 in 100 chance that they will um, get a different color, but otherwise they'll keep the same color. So you can have a whole clade of creatures with one color, and you can just go and kill them all off. <laughs> and then all those species, that color would be dead. And new clades would take over because that was a whole clade that you just killed. In a billion years in the game, in game time, your your future species will wonder why all the, the, that particular color won out. <laughs> mm. I think we should stray away from this topic. It's it's a bit of a minefield. <laughs> yeah, in other news, everyone. <laughs> get, um, there's a YouTuber called Kinesis who's played a lot of Thrive and he's got some pretty good Thrive videos and I will post a link to his latest video now so go and watch that and support him because he really enjoys the game which we're kind of surprised at because there's not much in the game right now yeah. but, I know that there's enough to keep him occupied <laughs> so go and watch that enjoy the game as he does mm-hmm
Why is all life on our planet red? <laughs> okay, well, we need to stop. We need to stop, guys. Let's move on to the topic. Um, Darwin asks, is this just a spore clone? Okay, it is not just a spore clone. It is our own game, and it annoys us when people call us spore too. Like, we appreciate the publicity, but... But it's like it's supposed to be more scientifically accurate. It it plays differently, right, Oliver? Basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, the original inspiration was for you know back in the day, back in how many years ago it was now. But the team has changed significantly, gone through several iterations since then. Um, the concepts have changed. You know, nowadays we don't really think about sport when we create new concepts. We just think about, oh, wouldn't this be cool? Or this might, this sounds like a good thing to have in a game or a, a simulator, and I think our focus has shifted more towards being a simulator than being a game. Maybe I don't know. It's hard to tell because there isn't much of a game slash simulator yet. Yeah. I do think. The Perhaps like spiritual successor might be like a decent description of it. Yeah, yeah, I think we 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 go for that. We're happy with people calling it that. Sport two. Now it's personal. Sport <laughs> Sport two. Electric boogaloo. Sport two. The thriving. <laughs> that's what Katie said that in chat. I thought that was funny. Oh, that's funny. The right. Wait, Thrive minus one colon EA cash grab? Okay. They're referring to, <laughs> that's what they're referring to Spore as. Oh, Spore is Thrive my Oh, ha, huh, funny. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> spore 2 fungus, basically. Spore You'll be able to the... play as a fungus. Spore 2 the story. That's part of the reason why we're not Spore 2. <laughs> Actually, right now you can play as a plant, but not a fungus. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, what exactly would constitute like being a fungus? Like they have like chitin, and no, they don't have chloroplasts. So. Well, okay. So the fungus would just it it just lives off of dead things. So I guess if you want to be a cell that only eats things that die in front of you, then you're a fungus, <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh. Like instead of taking the effort to kill them yourself, I don't. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to think of. Uh, but yeah, there there are single single cellular funguses, fungi. Yeah. It's good because they're in the yeah yeast. Right. Uh, if you if you want to be a fungus in in thrive, what you need to do is just make bread. That's the solution. <laughs> yep. Yes. That's how that works. Thri Spore 2, colon, thrive, colon, evolutions. Excla exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a... No, we don't talk about that. Never mind. There seems to be a running joke in the chat about grass. Yes. Uh, someone fill me in with this? Oh, okay, so I made... So I, I, I um compared playing as a... a plant in the multicellular stage to watching grass grow. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what they're talking about. And basically, it's, it's true. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could make that technically possible. Well, that, I mean, it'll know. probably be possible. It'll just be very boring. I don't... Right. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we'd have to figure out a way to make plants fun, but this is going off topic. Yes. Like it's, right now in the micro stage, it is fun to play as a plant. So, eh. right, because there's not much of a difference between them. Once there starts yeah. being a big difference between them, that's when we'll need to worry about that. Yeah, we 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 want to implement like cell walls and stuff. Yeah, eventually. Species A L R E two thrive. I like it. Um. I guess like something so uh we had kind of briefly talked about potentially um getting um kind of amoeba like cells potentially yeah could you expand on that because I, I yeah. don't think i've been keeping up with that yeah so um 
from what I was kind of gathering from some of the stuff was like that essentially um, I think part of the reason why people were we are kind of reluctant to get rid of the fatty assets of course you know, we can... <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Zepmas Spore 2 colon mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell yes <laughs> Uh, oh boy. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, um We need to add that back by the way. Yes. We, we do. Say that when you hover over when we eventually add descriptions to all all of the orchid elves. You know, it's obvious what we need to put for mitochondria. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh from what I understand, like so um I think this also touched on upon what somebody talked about earlier where they didn't like how rich the cells were. Like um essentially like uh, apparently there's uh it's, there are mechanisms by which cells evolutionarily decide how rigid or not rigid their cells are, which can have uh, various strategic um, values. Like, you know, if you're a very loose, have a very loose membrane that you have control over, then you kind of have an amoeba in which, like, you know, you're very easily pokeable, but you can very easily also then seal off the holes, so it's not too bad for you. Uh, but and then if you're, you can also be a very rigid cell in which, like, you know, it's very hard to poke you. And, but that also means that you can't move as easily without external stuff such as, um, um, uh, a flagellas and pileus and cilia and, what, and whatnots. Um, uh, yeah, th there was a piece of concept art that someone posted in the Discord a while ago about this and how different, um, Cell uh, yeah, exterior rigidities would lead to different gameplay styles. I'll try and find that. Yes. Um, it would, the big things like uh, we'll have to try and figure out exactly how we want to control that. Uh, potentially we could just keep the same controls. Just you know, you'd use Q and A potentially instead of just strafing. Well, the W, the WASD instead of just strafing and turning, also potentially um, moving. If you're more, less rigid, then that actually starts moving you towards that way. So. Yeah, I mean, there are different things we can try out and balance oh, um, to get right. Who's the person who is working on that new nucleus? Oh, Naro ties it. Okay. Yeah. Fortunately, he's not here with us. Yeah, but I've got a link to the image um, okay. so that people can see that the artists have been doing stuff too, like having a more organic looking nucleus. Nu nucleus. Hey, hey, untrusted life. You shouldn't link the actual image of the nucleus, you should link the image of a disco ball. And then that could be our April Fool's joke. Too late. Again. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, no, no. There's no April Fool's joke this year, remember? That's what we said. T t totally, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Totally no April Fool's joke. Oh, yeah. Uh, Arito also uh, worked um, mainly with Nick the Neck, though. I also get, uh, I think it was me, me and one other person, Ketra, was an untrusted lever, Crod knew. Uh, we gave like some feedback on a different. Um, UI that we might test, so there's apparently potentially some programming issues with doing curved bars, so. Wait, did you link a disco ball? No, I tried <laughs> I tried to link the image of the cell being killed in various so, ways. So did I, and then it failed. failed. Yeah, god damn it, Discord. Access denied error. Uh. I guess, it, yeah. Oh, well. well, at least you can see it, right, chat? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> if we were doing this properly, we'd write this, we'd write down at this point to put a link to that image in the description once we upload this. <laughs> but it, if anything is clear, we're not doing this properly. <laughs> so. I mean, oh, we, kind of are, we, huh? we located an ancient, an ancient ambient soundtrack. Recently. Did we? Yeah, I remember. Oh yeah, the one that we may or may not have permission to use. Yeah, that one. 
<laughs> it was deep in the bowels of the old um and all river was doing some mining um and he found it he, he it came me? up from the mines and he showed us i don't think it was me or was it nick that did it e- either I way they it... were in the mines yeah Oh. <laughs> you never do anything properly. Thanks, Bizzipple Bizzopple. Thanks. <laughs> that's, I'm, I, 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 that's very, um, that makes me sad, Zipple. It took you three tries to get the stream working, so safe to say, not quite, not doing quite properly. Not that I'm complaining. That sounds like complaining. You said not that I'm, ever. oh well. <laughs> Far in the future, Zelser. Far in the future. Right, I'm, I'm going to upload uh, some of the work that Narizo did on the GUI, so like what might become the UI in the future. I would love to play as a virus and thrive, Katie. That'd be awesome. I can play the plaguing sound from the background. Yes. <laughs> And you kill off the, that, that species that outcompeted you and gained intelligence. Yeah, Guys, my... should, we make... oh, sorry. should we merge the gameplay release and the engine switch release to be only one release? I think that is the plan at this point. Yeah, I think that's the plan. I mean, it, it might be useful to have an engine release anyway to make sure that it works for everyone and we can iron out bugs first then maybe we could do that as like a tech demo or something something a little yeah, but less it's, formal it's nice than to release. give people something to play with because it's been a while i've already located some of the top is on the release after the and actually Okay. I'll take a look at that. Oh my now. god. The oh my god, the blue ones has become a meme. Why? Why? Kills uh... I made a mistake. Yes you did. <laughs> Kick me off the team now. Uh kill all species except the blue ones. God damn it. <laughs> Isn't that just a pot of no that I don't know. I was thinking that's kind of the plot of Avatar, you know, with all the blue people who were the people you weren't going to, I don't know. If this becomes me. something that's, oh, it's going to be repeated and repeated and repeated and it's not my fault. Anyway, uh, it reminds me of that Rick and Morty episode. Uh, which one? The one where they were, um, where there was a war of the nipples. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. Shall we not let that happen in Thrive? I don't think that would be a good idea. For multiple reasons. Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah, maybe. I'm sure someone will make a mod out of it. Yeah. Well, now that of we've course. mentioned it, they will. Yeah, we've already ruined. It's ruined. Everything's ruined. I can't wait for all the bad press. Uh, well, there's going to be mods for underwater civilizations anyway, so no matter oh, how Oh yeah, Blue they... Pigment is super rare in nature, um, actually, it's true. Yeah, That why... is one of the rarest colors in nature. Why do you think that is? Maybe they were all killed. Maybe everyone <laughs> hates the blue things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like even apparently most of the things you see is like, most of the animals you see is blue. There's a lot of them that actually aren't technically blue. They just use weird light tricks to make themselves look blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. It's that's how um that's how butterflies do it. And then of course you know our eyes. Uh, if you have blue eyes, you essentially don't have any pigment in there. There's just it's just uh, light stuff going through, and it. Blue light just happens to be the one that gets out. Oh no, Kradnu. You didn't... No. No. No, he combined. <laughs> I've got the memes. The memes, there are too many. 
let's melt all the metal to melt all the metal. Oh, we were talking about before we went live uh, that it'd be it'd be fun to end an achievement for when you get too close to a volcanic vent in the multicellular stage. Well, while you're horribly boiling to death, it'll you'll get achievements called smelt all the metals because that makes no sense. Why the heck did you go into a volcanic vent? That's impossible. That's a dumb thing to do. Why did you do that? <laughs> yes. Okay. I love it. And of course, you know, I was saying, you know, there needs to be a sound of just you screaming since you're the one to like, since you're like the one behind this. And then uh, we can make it a, a special organelle that its only job is to play that sound when dying. Yes, it would what? scream. Why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it should scream. <laughs> Whatever Maritiza said in that. Like that um pod the other podcast. Uh, the metals. But wait, what if they could use the hydrothermal vents to smelt all the metal? <laughs> I've watched that video so many times. It's great. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as Laser asks, will there be an ability to genetically engineer? author and your species in a civilization type of stage. Yeah, the, yeah, you you will be able to do genetic engineering. That's planned. <laughs> Not this time of night. <laughs> <laughs> I've shared it with everyone. You can go and watch that video now. Um, but wait! Oh. What if they could use the hydrothermal vents to smelt all the metal? Oh god, not, oh god. not, not this time of night. Um, go on. Go on. Oh, um, is there anything else like that, was, that uh, we've kind of forgotten to talk about so far? Well, that was what I was going to touch on next, because we've spoken a lot about yeah. the engine and the gameplay, but the other, th the other big thing we're planning is the outreach stuff that's going to happen after 0.4 point whatever. Because at that point, we will hopefully have a more stable game, something we can that's a bit more usable, more features, more attractive to people who will see it for the first time. And so we can go and spread it throughout the internet and hopefully create some sort of self-sustaining development cycle. So, do anyone have anything to add to that about the outreach? Yeah. Um, after the engine switch, um, that should allow us to get more programmers on board, which should increase the speed of the game. At least that's the hope. It's always been the programmers that are kind of like a bottleneck. But weirdly, we have to. Ha we we seem to have more of them now than other people. It's like in the, in this chat right now, we've got one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so, wait, is Banham in a programmer? Have I forgotten him? Yes, I'm bad. Bad home is a programmer. We've got six then, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then there's me and not the GDD, the most of all non programmers who can't do anything. So. But but now they have more, more stuff now because we're getting to the point where they can they can all also add stuff. So Yay. Actually, it, it, you said you added something to do with sound today, so I guess that would have involved my music at some point. So I guess I contributed today, even though I didn't. I, I didn't actually be in, do it properly. But true. We also need some new organelles. We need a chemoplast. We need a pilus. I think we have a pilus already. Um, we we need some organelles to be remade and retextured. That's a thing. Yes. By getting rid of the X with the toxin toxin vacuole. Yeah, the toxin vacuole, which is an X, which needs to not be an X. It's like yeah. make it like a purple vacuole. Come on. Anyway. Yeah, call to call to 3D bottlers. We need your help. Call to everyone else. We also need your help. Because it Thrive is an open source project, and anyone is free to contribute as much or as little as they wish. Yep. Um, I guess, uh, we've kind of talked about potentially adding thermoplast, but we're not really certain, you know, what difference that would make versus just ordinary chemosynthesis other than it uses heat instead of light. Yeah, yeah it's starting to lose its, um, hold. Yeah, I, 
I guess like perhaps, I want we can, them. perhaps we could just make it so that you can like maybe customize some of the organelles and so that you know uh, they can determine whether or not they use light or heat. Um, that's a possibility. I mean, it would be. I don't know whether that's better than having separate organ organelles to do that. Yeah. <coughs> Thermoplasts have been part of the concept for quite a while now, even if they're not technically possible. Yeah, the, so. the, the, the point of them is to allow for just some more interesting things. Like, like now you can have heat eating plants or whatever. Yes. People, look, the, the blue grass is the powerhouse of the cell. What do you people? Oh. <laughs> blue, blue grass. Ah, the the blue is the powerhouse of the. Oh, boy. Oh, someone says I can still make sick beats. Thanks. Uh, what about sick beats? How accurate of a Shrek can I make? Very oh, accurate. Probably, probably a very accurate Shrek. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a plant animal. I mean, plant animal. Or probably animal be... plant. Plant an animal. Plant animal. I think they'd probably be limited more by like how many vectors, or by how many triangles your computer can render, and exactly how much time you want to spend making a realistic Shrek. Uh, Slacer, yeah. maybe. Slacer asks, will there be the ability to just simulate a game versus playing? Um, if you want that, go to Species ALRE. But we may do it too, who knows? Yeah, but... but Species AL ALRE does that pretty good, pr pretty well right now. I like the idea of having like a query, uh, a version of Christ that you can just fence. Yeah, that'd yeah, be that'd... cool. Yeah. You could see all the wondrous forms that form in the tide pool. I mean, it won't really take that much more programming since we essentially just, you know, disconnect the player. Yeah, the difficulty is how do you know what the player will be looking at and how do you because i think the idea is for the when you enter the editor it's supposed to kind of be like oh so, so a certain time has passed and uh, that's when the cpa sim simulation will run and <clears throat> all the other all, all the other cells will update so if you're not playing as a cell yourself and therefore won't go into the editor then how are we going to sort that out that's true Grass evolves into Shrek. <laughs> oh boy. Thermosynthetic bluegrass. <laughs> okay, Frost, Frosty Flytrap asks, is there a chance that you would evolve under an ice layer on a planet like Europa? Now this is an interesting question because we were actually talking about the chance of getting the Snowball Earth event in the microbe stage oh, yeah. like a week ago. We were indeed. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> and especially like that uh, you can also help cause some of that um, by, you know, turning all the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere. Oh, I think he disappeared. Yep. Me or you... who? Zayed. Zayed. You've gone extinct. <laughs> See, Ed, you've gone extinct. Let me grab that. <laughs> He's evolved into some sort of digital spluttering. Actually, this is the one I favor. Um, gosh darn it. Um, not this one. This one. There we go. Copy. Uh, press F to pay respects to Ziad. Oh, gosh. You know what you started now. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, uh, quick question answer. Uh, Dutch, game will be free? From what I understand, right? Yeah, game will be free and open source forever. Yeah. Uh, whether we eventually end up accepting donations or something similar, 
it, it, that won't affect that. You know, the game will always be free. We'll never charge for that. So, right. I love, I love this. This is beautiful. I've never had such meme power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you can put. You're coding the game. You know, you can put loads of Easter eggs in the code or something. You know, I something think can come along. I was something and I actually interrupted them. I don't something interrupted them, but they're not saying anything, so never mind. Oh. <laughs> People talking about the realistic Shrek, they're saying he's got to have layers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's like an onion. In fact, that's how he evolved. He's an onion that can walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to see someone make that. In, in the game, in the end, you know, you, you start out as a pitiful onion and you rise up through the ranks to build a civilization based on Shrek. That would be great. Naruto Taisa did, Naruto Taisa did a um, let's play of Spore um, where they played as a pitiful worm. And got hundreds of thousands of views. Yep. Yeah, we we really need to use Narratizer's star power, really. He, he's ba he's basically a YouTube celebrity now, thanks to thanks to his pitiful word videos. <laughs> well, memes are the powerhouse of the thrive. I love it. Yes, they are though. <laughs> we, we've got to have something to occupy ourselves while things are being programmed. Oh, Frosty! The Pitiful Worm series is how they found Thrive in the Forest. That's awesome. Thank you, Narotaiza. <laughs> you know someone was saying about how we got off track earlier? Now we're I... actually off track. <laughs> I mean, we, to be fair, we have covered all the important bases now. You know. We've talked about the engine switch, the upcoming gameplay features, and the following outreach. So, I think we're good. We we have an excuse to mess around now. But yeah, guys, the engine switch is going really well. Um, thanks to the work of Harlan Kradnu and all everyone else who's a programmer. But mainly them. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Well, I mean, oh come on! I've been, I've been the second, I've been, I've contributed the second most last month. Yeah, you, yeah, you've, ah. you've done quite a bit of work as well. <laughs> but no, it's mostly Ireland and Crowd New. Um. <laughs> well, if if you look back on the Engine Refactor branch on GitHub, look at all the commits. I, I like doing this sometimes to realize, wow, people are very dedicated to this and they're putting a lot of time into it. And most of the recent ones have to be, to be fair, been untrusted life. But if you go back, it's all Mira So yeah. But I, I, I commit like in chunks. Um, so I commit more often generally, even if I'm committing less code. I don't know, but whatever. We are a I very professional development code, team. Very. Quite a bit of code. Like the biome stuff, like that's going to be awesome when that's working properly. Yeah, we, we need to hype people up for the next release, really, but not too much because then when the engine's still got quite a bit to go, so they can't Complacer, be Complacer, you've been a great source of questions recently. You've been a great source of questions. Um, question, will there be divergent species from your species that evolved? I have not brought this up ever, but I want that. <laughs> kind of weird not to have that if we're going for realism. Well, yeah, and it'd be fun to compete against your own clade, right? Right. Like, I mean, like, especially like if you create like a very powerful um, uh, species yourself, and then they evolve a more, it's a, a one part evolves a even better thing than. No longer, you're no longer at the top of the branch. 
Yeah, in in my mind, the game is all about trying to beat the simulation at its own game, because it's it's developing new species that will beat you to the top of the branch. Yeah, but you you have to try and stop that happening and find the best ways of doing that. And that's what I'm looking forward to most, because to me, that's the whole point of the game. I, I don't know whether everyone else sees it that way. It seems like everyone has their own thing to their one. Somebody was like, it'll be really cool to play a bacterial gut as a gut bacteria. Which, okay. Uh, yeah. I do. What's up? Ooh. The Discord has disappeared from this dream. Sorry, I, know it's I back. had to it, like, untrust it. Uh, mm. All right. That sounds very important. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah. oh. Speaking of not very important, I've dug up some Thrive memes that I've... Uh, how, how will biomes be differentiated? It's another thing we've been discussing a lot lately. Um. Um, they, they will have different compound concentrations. We've talked about having acid there's a lot of ideas floating around. Yeah, um, I think we wrote it down somewhere, but I can't remember where. It, it, there was a forum thread where we decided what the different effects of each biome would be. And here we go. I found it. So people can go and read that and learn about how we're deciding to differentiate the biomes. Yeah, and I've, and I've kind of started that with the um, uh, lighting changes, so. That's all of it. Nice. People telling me that meme is old. Well, I made it a while ago, okay? It was in our dev blog, like a couple of dev blogs ago. <laughs> Do I like acid, Nicola? Yes, especially if it kills people. I mean, cells. <laughs> like, like, that's a great environmental hazard. What will happen if our creature starts asking themselves if they're in a simulation? Uh, well, I then we have to turn off the simulation. Yeah. Very simple. I started talking to it. There's a chance we live in a simulation. What if, we're in, what if we're actually in the completed version of Thrive right now? Whoa. Mm -hmm. Except for it's an alien Thrive. Now the question is whether or not they can see that we're trying to recreate the game that they're in. That they make. <laughs> Zion is attempting to communicate. It communicates in strange rubbing noises. <laughs> it turns out, if we are living in a simulation and we're, we're, we're all living in Thrive, he's actually the person who created Thrive and is trying to contact us to tell us about it now. <laughs> but he, he's having to go through all of the, like, I don't know, the weirdness of interdimensional travel. And so he only comes to us as a series of beeps. <laughs> the Zyad is the creator of the simulation. No. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like, these humans, I don't, I don't know why. Let's just turn off the simulation now. That's what they think. they're thinking. All, all hail Lord Zyad. We must hail the god Zyad. <laughs> Praise Zyad, who's also called Spode, who's also called... Uh, I don't even know. I need more coffee. <laughs> Mission. Be the 0.01% of the microbes that survive the soap. I like that. If we do put <laughs> viruses in, that could be a thing. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun, actually. 
I think it could be fun, you know, just playing as like a mob that literally just trades and kills off other things. It could be fun. It could be a bit morbid. I mean, yeah. the game is I mean, already all about gaining more and more flagella and eating people. True. I think that's how Kinesis plays it. And also there's, I mean, Plague Incorporated, which is literally about trying to cause humanity to go extinct. Yeah. I think video games can take some license in the amount of implied violence in them. Yes. I wish, I wish Kinesis would join the stream, because I want to say hi to Kinesis. Are Everyone, go to Kinesis, upvote his videos now. I do fear that if he says he's going to keep making Thrive videos, but he's going to run out of stuff to do soon. Yeah, and that's so why we, we, need to get, we need to work faster. We need to keep <laughs> up with Kinesis. I think that's like, you've summed up the entire problem with Thrive there in one sentence. Well, the thing is that Katie's in chat, I don't want to ignore them, they, they, they asked, when will the game be released? <sighs> well, the game is already released. You, know, you can already download it. It's just a very the early version. It will be released one day. I don't think we'll ever have a full, proper release. It will just be incremental releases like we're doing now until we get somewhere that's quite fun. And then we'll realize one day, hey, we've got to the point at which we, the game could be considered done. So. Like Minecraft. Yeah. I think that's kind of that might be the way forward for games in the future, with all of this, you know, um, collaborative work going on over the internet. Right. And there's already, I mean, like several games, you know, that essentially are just in permanent development, but they're they just try and make it so that they're fun or at least playable at each stage and. You oftentimes don't even realize it's still not even technically in beta release. Yeah. I, th I, th I like to look at Kerbal's base program as a model for how we should operate. Because we're, we're kind of doing a similar thing to them, making a science based game that's also fun, hopefully. Uh, and they were in, of course, they, they were, of course, in beta for ages. So. My headset died. Oh no, we've lost entrusted life. No. Pre press F to pay respects, everyone. Honor his memory by posting about right. blue grass. I oh no, he's back. Okay, we don't need to do that. Oh, seven Fs already? <laughs> I, think, I think you're too late. Here comes the Fs. Nah, uh, you guys are already in the, the, the fifth. The, the the next stage of grie grieving. I'm done. I'm done for. Oh. <laughs> Blue F. God damn it! You should have turned your <laughs> you should have turned your mic back on and said you were a ghost. And uh, you've missed out on this opportunity now. You 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 could have spooked us all. Uh, I could have I could have made jokes, but I, I'd rather just hear people talk. <clears throat> How would gravity affect if you are on a moon of a gas giant or a terrestrial light planet? You know, I wish that we could play the micro stage in a cloud. Like, that'd be great. Yeah. Perhaps you like gas giant stuff? That could be kind of interesting. Well, I don't... the problem is that we'd have to, like, the game would have to know that you're in a cloud. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so then we need two different. We need we need a whole new background, a whole new settings for all the biome. It's it's not a good idea. Yeah. Not right now. Yeah. Maybe in a couple of years. Uh, I, I that, guess that, that reminds me of a. I think it's called Blue Moon. Um. Oh no, Blue! God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have pointed it out. It's a, oh. So the, you ever talked about the expression "once in a blue moon," right? No, no. There's a. Um, uh, I'm not advocating that you watch this on YouTube because that's probably piracy. 
Um, but it's a um episode of a um docu, like a docu fiction, like a scientific docu fiction about life on an alien planet. And the planet is called, and it's not a planet, but it's a moon. Um, and it's called Blue Moon, and um the atmosphere is super thick, so the transition from water to air is um there's nothing in between it so you can go from water to air directly because the atmosphere is so viscous so you end up with all the creatures being like you have like you have like floating whales and stuff Ooh. it's cool yeah i think it definitely like with the like gravity effects uh you know like uh thanks to just like how thick the atmosphere is on earth and the gravity it's kind of it's impossible for it's or at least Incredibly difficult for creatures larger than a certain size to be able to fly. Uh, unfortunately, humans are above <clears> that <throat> limit, so we can't fly using our own arm muscle strength. Uh, but it would definitely be kind of interesting, like to make it so that uh, in the multicellular states, you can kind of, depending on you know, how your planet is, that you know you could get bigger, or bigger flying stuff, or Smaller stuff at the gravity is a lot higher. Uh, yeah. Hmm. At least, I do think probably gravity gravity probably will play into like exactly what you can build in the multicellular stage. I'd imagine, right? To some extent, I don't know how detailed we're going to go with that, but I think it it doesn't sound like it would be too difficult to do. You know, you can just build things with the highest higher mass and a higher center of mass if you've got lower gravity. That's right. not too difficult a thing to add in, I would think. Yeah. This is me talking to several programmers here and telling them what's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there is a lot of stuff that's possible, it's just whether or not it's easy. Yes. Uh, every, Turing complete, Turing completeness, we can do whatever. It's a matter of speed. Yes. I'm just thinking right now, if we go back to the dev team, the rest of the dev team, and talk about blue grass to them, and blue stuff, and grass, and onions, and Shrek, they're not going to have a clue what we're on about. Uh, they'll, they'll have missed out. <laughs> they should have been here. We just got to tell them to watch the stream. I mean, to watch the VOD of the stream. Yeah. Which has now been going for about one and a half hours. Nice. So... And we've been on Thrive for most of the, that time. Most of that yeah, time. Yeah, we, we, we trail off occasionally, but then we get back on track. But actually, now that I think of it, like right now at the limited stage that we're in, in Thrive, we could add, like, you're playing the microbe stage in clouds on this one planet or whatever sometimes. But um, yeah, it's, the it's matter just... is, once we get beyond that, um, once we get to the multicellular stage, then we'd have to know that you're, you know, you're floating around in the air, not in water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, right now we could implement that. Like, it would work right now, and then we'd have to remove it once we add the next stage or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't laughing at you. <laughs> We're looking at the, like, the olive for... For a meme or the uh, next one? The, the only room of a meme. But... <laughs> that one's good as too. Next one's good too. Let's see. Yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking about. Uh, you know, it's not what's possible. Not so much about what's possible. It's more about what's plausible for us to be able to do. Yeah. I mean, to some extent, <laughs> the whole game. That is that is that's questionable plausibility. Image, Ireland. Yeah, it's like we could add whatever, right? But <laughs> just keep adding, keep adding, keep adding, and suddenly it's twelve years in the future, and we still haven't released four point <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess if we want to be completely realistic, we would just you know do an ab initio simulation. You know, take you know like about ten years to. Simulate one second. <laughs> yeah. Oh, computers will be powerful enough in ten years. We'll be good. 
That's what they said. That's what they said ten years ago when <laughs> Bro started development. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they can. Multi stage. Like... It'll be a while. We have to get the actual microbe stage before we add the multi cellular stage. Um, I said that I'd like to get the cellular heart stage going. Engine. That'd be kind of cool. So there might be some color potential and them to stage on But that's it. It's just like a proof concept. Yeah, the difficulty with having them potentially in the main game is that it, it, they rely on concepts and things that have to be carried forward from previous stages. So if you haven't got everything worked out that needs to be carried forward already, then it could be quite difficult having to second guess what's going to be there. Well, I'm talking about basic stuff like how uh, order is to stuff like that. And yeah, we could that, that sort of thing would be good to do because it there are some people who don't like the microbe stage. So if we could show them other stages as well, at least in prototype form, then that would be good. Uh, the zipple, the zapple. Would the background in the shallows in the micro be dynamic based on the atmosphere color? Well, I suppose it doesn't make sense that in the algae bloom, everything's green if all the chloroplasts on your planet are black or whatever. <laughs> so we probably should think about that a little bit. But I guess that makes it even harder for us to add the chloroplast colors. <sighs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we should just kind of stick with the green chloroplast because there isn't really much that changing the colors really does in terms of gameplay. Well, I, I think it's just cool to have your planet feel a little bit different, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> maybe, maybe we have that, like, as the setting to use so that, you know, like, if you want to make it so that you have a little harder time distinguishing organelles, you can make it so that the colors can be variable, but if you want them all to be more standard so you can more easily see them than have standard colors. I, I just realized that that it'd be a nightmare with the current biome system to have a different background for each chloroplast color because we'd have to add... <laughs> Because since background is, background is a single variable inside the JSON for the biome, we would have to either change that, or we'd have to have a bunch of different copies of that biome with different background colors. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I mean, the, it's it's comes down it comes down to a question of what you want to do for purely cosmetic purposes, and what will actually affect the gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Oliver, you're bad at memes. Stick to music, okay? Uh, just a question. Uh, someone's asking about time travel mechanics. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this game is already am ambitious enough as it is. D like, like Dwarf Fortress wanted to do time travel at one point, and they were like, nope, that didn't work. So Dwarf we're Fortress definitely really... not going to do time travel mechanics. Nope, nope, nope. If they can't do it with, like, a, a roguelike with text, there's no way we're going to be able to do it for, like, our game, uh-uh, no. The so only thing much memory would be required to hold all that data. Yeah. Like, I the suppose you could keep... I, I suppose you could, like, take a... You could, like, 
keep in memory like all the species that have ever existed with the fossilization thing, which we've talked about. Ugh. Yeah, no. The fossilization uh, the thing... mechanics. But whatever. The only thing I can think of that would be like, you know, considered technically time travel is, you know, if we implement special relativity in the kind of space stage. Um, but that gets difficult. Going... What if someone deletes to... the save file Frosty Flytrap? <laughs> yeah, but that's only, you know, traveling forward in time and it's just essentially just speeding up the certain parts of the simulation. But yeah, even that would be. That'll be. You, you have to account for what would be the reference frame of the player if they're looking over the entirety of their space empire. That's true. You know, that they'll have. There is no universal absolute time. Right. Uh, so. Probably whoever is the emperor or something. Yeah. If, if we were to do that, which sounds a bit too far in my opinion, then yeah, that seems a re the most reasonable way of doing it. Right. Time travel would be useful to prevent fungus from creating an underwater civilization. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and the fungus is, of course, smelting, smelting metal underwater. Um, that's what they're doing. They, because they're using... they evolved resistance to lava. Yeah. They're using <laughs> volcano vents and. <laughs> they, they evolved. Uh... Waterproof electronics and such. And... They evolved the waterproof electronics. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had to grow it, and then eventually they're able to make organic waterproof electronics. I bet you the fungus is also blue, right? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so they're making underwater electronics. Could they become an underwater civilization? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so let's 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 let's. But wait, no, I won't do that. Uh, smelt all the metal. So we talked. About, so one thing we did talk about is an alien species coming down and giving you technology. Yeah, that's, that's the lovely. only way. No other way. Aliens. So, so in other words, you could you could play as a like a pre metals civilization in the sense in that your species is aware and such and then eventually some species comes down and shows you how to make a metal underwater using high tech technology is that what you're like talking about uh it's not necessarily showing them how to it's providing the systems to do it because a lot of the right. the problems with ha uh creating metal underwater we ended up the possible solutions ended up being catch-22 situations. Like, you'd need an airtight box, but to build an airtight box, you need to have proper <laughs> metal working. So, yeah. if someone gives you metal working in the first place, then you can do it from there. Right, right. Yeah, that, also, that's what also you fail to death and you get close to the volcanic vents. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But what if they could use the hydrothermal vents to smelt the metal? They can't. The hydrothermal vents would eat them. But they what if they could? Existence. They'll never exist ever again. They go suspend, <laughs> suspend your disbelief. What if they could? <laughs> Sorry, no. I'll stop now. <laughs> well, um... uh, no, the fungus can also do time travel. That's how they gained their technology, is time travel. Yes. Blue fungus that somehow evolved time travel, and they 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 um, created an underwater civilization uh, were there, and they also evolved resistance to lava. It was less <laughs> impossible. And I, I this this is a rabbit hole. Let's, let's keep going. <laughs> the aliens um, came to time machine and gave them the technology from their future, even though it hasn't happened yet, because time mechanics thrive. Don't make any sense. There we go. Solved. They're resolved. Uh. Um. Oh, I saw a uh, kind of earlier. Uh, They're wondering whether or not we're going to be doing the Fermi paradox in any fashion, like having some sort of like 
make it difficult to, you know, get overcome certain stages or something. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> oh, so, someone, was ask, <laughs> someone was asking about the paradox and whether or not it can be implementing some of the, you know, the proposed solutions to that in our game. We essentially you know that um, one of the main ones being that there's essentially that creating intelligent life is hard. Um, well, we're going to have to make a guess about that. We can't really be realistic in that aspect. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I guess we'll come to that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I mean, I guess I guess I don't see any reason not to implement like a civilization like the Fanatic Purifiers in Stellaris, that's presenting all the lower civilizations, and then you get invaded at the civilization stage, and then you yeah. lose because there's no way you can compete with them technologically. Yeah, that seems a bit unfair. Yeah. Probably maybe have. <laughs> You could potentially have that as like an option. Like, are you willing to have game-ending events that you have absolutely no control of unless you evolve quickly? Well, yeah, I think yeah, some I people have like advocated that. those in the past. Yeah. Weirdly. But I mean, those would those would only be on the very hardcore levels of difficulty. Of there are just some people who are masochists, you know. They they get to do that. Hmm. There will be some species that drive in the wrong side of the road. Oh no. Uh, They'll get out-competed because they're driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all get killed. Natural selection. There we go. Answer <laughs> to your question. <laughs> Is this considered a casual game? I think it's a very relaxing game right now. And we want to kind of cater to different playstyles eventually. So if you want it, if you want it to be kind of an arcade shooter-ish kind of thing, where it's really you're going around stabbing lots of cells very quickly and dying a lot, but reproducing a lot, then you can do that if you go down the right evolutionary path. Alternatively, if you want a more relaxing game, you can become a big plant cell and just defend yourself from all of those tiny things coming along trying to stab you. And then you can just drift along to the currents listening to my music. Which is amazing. Oh, thank you. Better than my memes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll try and accommodate multiple play styles. I don't know how successful we'll be in that, but it's all a question of playing it, getting feedback and balancing it out. Maybe by the time that we get this all uh, released, we'll have like a mind computer interface so we can start hooking ourselves up to the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could do. Maybe we'll actually have invented time travel by that time. <laughs> Maybe. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and it's blue. <laughs> Just. We need to send that to the rest of the dev team right now, with no context. <laughs> uh, I'll do that. I'll do that now. Oh boy. Well, I'd be able to play as a self-aware blue coconut. I guess, possibly, if you're able to make that work. Where do you guys come from? Asked Lewis. All over the world, actually. Uh, I mean, if we want to go through personally where we're all from right now. Okay. Untrusted Life, do you want to start? I'm from the United States. <laughs> Same. I'm from the UK. We. I'm from.
I think Zayat's trying to answer and failing. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you are you actually from Egypt? That'd be cool. Hey. Yes, all around the world. Yeah. And see, this is just I, some see, of us. I told you we're not Eurocentric. <laughs> don't, don't go there. <laughs> Let's change topic, please. Um, <laughs> revolutionary games. The true question is, I, will I be able to play as a self-aware blue communist fungus society? I'm going to say yes. I don't know. Um, there are many parts to that, some of which will probably be possible, others maybe not. I think being a fungus and being a society might be mutually exclusive. But otherwise, yeah. I, mean, I guess a self-aware blue communist animal society, I guess. Fungus may be a bit of a stretch. <laughs> oh yeah, it doesn't have a Shrek face. The fungus doesn't have a Shrek face, you guys. Ah. Oh. No. Fix it. <laughs> Fix your memes, not the GDD. Okay. <laughs> Uruguay, that's. I'm gonna go for a minute. I'll be back soon. Don't okay. go too wild without me. <laughs> all right. Now that Oliver has disappeared, let's talk about his mother. I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's see. Uh Garnio, Urga is in South America, right? So. Oof. Why so many commies? I want fastest bird civilizations. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, you'll be able to play as a whatever ideology. Yeah. Um, there's even a theme for fascism. Uh... Yeah. yeah. I mean, you technically have to play as a clean fastest. What's what's wrong with Ziad? Ah, uh, yeah, actually. Or he's in chat. He's in the the chat, the text chat. Yeah, I've also from guest <laughs> box. Tell me. Hey, I like that theme. My... <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like that theme a lot. <laughs> Green Guru, um, do you have a mic? Also, who are you? <laughs> Oliver disappears and suddenly communism. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Back, he'll be like, no. <laughs> this is what happens when he's not around. It's horrible. Hey, Stealth Style, you joined the, the chat. Awesome. Do you have a mic? Seriously, do you have a mic? Oh, sad day. Why are you obsessed with, um, we're not Nicola? Like, it's... Honestly, I don't know how, why, why. I, sh I shouldn't have answered that question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... I mean, guys, you guys, like, you know... Probably another couple of years before we get around to implement ideology. So, you know, if you want to create your own ideologies, go ahead.
In your speech, oh man, okay. Hey guys, how about we talk about biological wheels? Yes, the lady doesn't <laughs> have biological wheels. Um, probably. I mean, essentially, you just have to kind of sculpt it, right? Oh, hey Oliver, you're back. Hello, what did I miss? Uh, <laughs> biological wheels. Yeah, biological wheels is what you missed. Oh god, I left for five minutes and it descended into chaos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, did you come to any conclusions about biological wheels? Uh, no, 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 not yet. We actually just started talking about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from what I understand, especially in the early multicellular stage, you just kind of semi sculpt your. Your species? Have I got um, that correct? Lewis, Lewis, um, don't worry. Yeah, I think so. Calm down. Calm down. We'll calm down. In which case, it'd be kind of pretty much impossible to prevent people from creating biological wheels. The question is whether or not they can make that a viable source or not, a viable method of transportation. Um, well, like the, the, yeah. The problem with wheels is they'd have to be disconnected somehow. Right. And there's Will no... Will genders be added? Uh, probably. You'd have to have different... Or maybe you don't want to have differentiation between male and female. I know that we, we, we plan to have sexual reproduction even in the cell stage. I mean, in the microbe stage. Yeah. But... I think the in the original concept for the organism editor, there was a cast editor alongside it where you divide your species up into different casts so maybe it would be male and female or if you were kind of like an ant creature you'd have a queen and worker and soldier type and you could design those individually and give them some subtle variation but i don't know how that would fit into the overall evolution of a creature because how much how much ability would you have to ch to change them compared to your base creature if you're limited by mutation points. We can oh, potentially... So uh, so some, uh, one mechanism we might do for the sexual reproduction is that, like, uh, is we could make it so that uh, if you do sexual reproduction, then you can get more mutation points, but at the cost that you have to find someone else to, to mate with. Oh god, the cyclids have started. Yeah, this this um okay, so the thing is you guys um like the idea of having political ideology in the game, like in the society stage, has always been part of the concept. Like you should be able to customize your society. Um but yeah, it, 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 th those kinds of subjects can get touchy, which is why we need to avoid those subjects until they're yeah. actually relevant. It's probably better to discuss them in a text format, because then you can think about what you're going to say, and say yeah. it carefully. Uh, can I make alien reproductive organs? Again, that's going down a weird path. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll we'll answer that question when we get there. I don't really want to answer it right now. Uh, I guess in this sense, that kind of sounds like the uh, trying to prevent spawn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was actually reading. <laughs> oh, why did I laugh at that? Okay, I was actually reading. Um. An article recently about No Man's Sky and Spore, and about the prevalence of dick monsters in those games. Was this a proper serious article trying to understand why there were so many? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Could you give give us the link if you can find it again? Well, I don't think that was like their main subject, but they focused a lot on it for some weird reason. Maybe I don't know. Clearly, they have the same things on their mind as the people who make those things, anyway. Yeah. 
Oh, here's an interesting question. Uh, how is movement in multicellular going to be different from the microbe stage? Uh, well, for one thing, it's going to transition into a 3D plane that you can, well, not plane, but 3D space you can move around in rather than just 2D. Because right now the game is 3D, but everything's locked to the 2D plane. This isn't the same article, but it's about dick monsters. <laughs> oh, it said you can't find the page again. Oh, now it can. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> someone said, I recently found out about, about your project and I got pretty interested. I'm looking forward to what you will develop. I wanted to ask, though, how can you join your Discord? Uh, you can join our Discord, but the dis just anyone can. But the Discord voice chats that, like we're having right now, are only for developers. So, I mean, you can have voice chats with other people other, at other, other times, because we have separate channels for those. Uh, Aatrox finally fits in for once. Blue and biological wheels. Mm. <laughs> biological wheels. I mean, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be possible. Isn't that kind of like, like if that if that happens to be a valid survival strategy on your planet, then you'll get biological wheels. I mean, in a sense, uh, we should probably make it so that it's possible to do things, you know do more things that don't happen on Earth, and, but that are possible, and then, you know, you can kind of figure out on your own, like, why or not we don't, we do or don't have those things on Earth. Yeah, it would be quite good if the game could, in a way, teach us some stuff about life and why certain things happened in life and why others didn't. But I doubt it will really be that detailed. Yeah, I mean, like, there's probably going to be some, I mean, even, like, you know, you can, even if we could kind of do, I'm certain, even if we just, like, as long as we kind of keep in mind that we're trying to keep it at least somewhat realistic, that we'll automatically stumble across at least some of those things. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, there was some game that did teach people something new <clears throat> about science. I can't remember what. I, th um, I don't know. Uh, what field of science was it uh, teaching? I can't even remember. Uh, no, it's it it's not there. <laughs> I just remember I just remember it happened. I can't remember any specifics for it. Oh. Oh, this this guy has an interesting question. What about cooperation with Vsauce um, on the bio wheels thing? Now let's expand this question to YouTubers in general. Um, we definitely plan to reach out eventually. Yeah, I mean, we, we were, we did have interest at one point from quite a big science-based YouTuber. I don't know whether, can we name him here? So I don't even know whether you people know about that. And we, we're already like supporting Kinesis, for example, so. Yeah, I mean, we're very happy when YouTubers play our game and enjoy it. Um, and obviously after the engine switch and after we had things like combat and, and balancing stuff, it'll be more fun to play and more people will want to play it on YouTube and it will give more content for them to access when they're doing so. Well, hello there, Dinochist from Brazil. How are you doing today? He says he is he is Brazilian, as if, <laughs> as if that's a description of how he's doing today. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that is. I don't know. Maybe being Brazilian is a personality type. Uh, will each playthrough have different planet characteristics? Probably. Uh, that, and you will probably be able to customize them to some extent, although not. I don't know in how much detail. Uh, 
Uh, someone says, I think this is the longest podcast yet, boys. Uh, oh, well, tr tracking back on the YouTube thing, we're just under two hours now. We have gone over two hours before. I just went over two hours, five pro. Uh, episode five was two hours, 43 minutes. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, we might need to start thinking about wrapping up before we go too long and accidentally op enter April Fool's Day. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, some, something like uh, I saw someone ask uh, earlier was like uh, whether or not bigger creatures consume more energy, and I imagine that'd be the case. The more cells you have, the more energy you'd have to maintain, consume to maintain yourself. Uh, <laughs> planet sized organi organisms. Probably not. Yeah, I don't um, think so. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how viable that would be. Like, unless, unless, like, you're, you're, you have a planet that's taken over a whole planet. Yeah. I mean, and then you're maybe they could, like, or whatever. Yeah, maybe they can create it, but they probably very quickly find out why that isn't a very viable strategy. Yeah, they kind of be stuck there. Yeah. Until an asteroid happens to hit them, and then and then the seed hits the other planet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that'd be interesting. Mm. It would be quite difficult for them to reproduce as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, in order to find mates, they have to change orbits. So, which means like reactionary mass. That's means... yeah, yeah. That's. Okay, changing topic. Uh, someone <laughs> said, Thrive is an April Fool's joke, just admit it already. Uh, you got us! Yeah, it's a joke. Uh, uh huh. Totally. Uh, um, <laughs> well, I don't know. It, it, I don't think it started on April Fool's Day. I don't know whether there's any way of knowing because all of that stuff has disappeared into the archives of the internet that are completely unknowable. I think Evolutions was, was originally a... Um... Oh yeah, it was. It was yeah. originally a joke. It was a mm -hmm. hoax in the first place, so kind yeah. of. You're not so far from the truth. Is there anyone that even like left from the original team? No. <laughs> not from the original team, but I've been around since 2013. Okay, so... Oliver was there before me. Slightly. Um, uh, Green Guru says he's from the original team. Uh, I don't even know who Green Guru is. Yeah, I don't remember you. Explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I Welcome suspect... back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 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 uh, well, what did you do? Yes, yeah, so for reference, um, I think the the original Thrive people, we don't have anyone, any of them left, unless Green Guru weirdly is one of them. <laughs> Uh, you created him. Oh no. Yeah. Are you Sven? Um, do we need to ban him? <laughs> Should we take precautionary measures? <laughs> <laughs> Oliver is a hoax with his bad memes. <laughs> hey, I'm a man. <laughs> oh. I've lost so much, like, there's so many internet points today. Okay. I messed up the stream. I made bad memes. I'm just like, well, oh, no one's going to respect so, me anymore. So I, I guess, like, I don't. Know. Right, so who is? Well, I guess I mean, Green Guru, you, you, you don't appear to have done anything wrong so far. So you just stay around, I guess. I don't know. But if you are Sven, uh, you know what we have to do. So I guess, like. Uh... <laughs> For my sake, and I guess anyone else who might not know the story, so who is Ben, and why does that person need to die? 
Uh, well, I don't. I, mm. He doesn't need to die. die. That's, okay. That's just us being a bit exaggerated. Uh, okay. The the story of Thrive is an interesting one because it started on the Spore forums with a user called Hern Sausen or Sven, who posted some screenshots from what he claimed was a game that he'd made that was like a hyper realistic Spore, ah. and some people believed it, some people didn't. Um, he later came out and admitted it was all a hoax, which, if you look at the images, is fairly obvious in retrospect. Because <laughs> um, they they're very highly rendered, and for a game made by one person to do that, it would not be possible. So, yeah. But then people got so invested in this idea of there being another spore that a team was actually put together to create it, with Sven as the original leader. So they, they got together, they got together in a forum, they came up with those ideas, created concepts and whatever. Um, but over time, people just started to feel that the project's leadership wasn't as effective as it could be. Uh, and there were some disagreements between Sven and the other moderators. So a splinter group broke off and created Thrive on a separate forum. Uh, and then evolutions which was the original game that was a hoax and then became an actual project uh slowly whittled away as people as people left it leaving only thrive behind and that's been going ever since through different forums and different groups of developers for quite some time so there you go this is the story of thrive yeah, okay so Sven was like the originator behind that all essentially now he's like the guy who's on the wrong oh, side oh silicon I remember you. No, he's uh, not. Psycon, for reference, was um, the leader of Thrive after Sven, and he was around for quite some time and was quite good at it. Okay. So, but then he left eventually. And I, th I think he's now an archaeologist. No, paleontologist. So. Dinochus just told us they're Brazilian again. <laughs> <laughs> Brazil is blue. <laughs> uh, 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 someone had a quick question about like whether or not you can choose where your organs are placed. Uh, I can't imagine why we want to have that since you essentially be creating your own organs. So. Yeah, yes. that's always been part of the plan, really. So, so short answer, yes. I guess the question, I guess like... Do anyone has a question like, can I customize my species in a in a way that's such that it's made of, of differentiated cells? The answer is yes. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, Berkman, um, the we're actually we're quite alive. It's going very well. The engine switch is going is actually going pretty quickly at this point. So, is is Bazipple Bazapple just a um, Markov chain generator? Sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> oh, I I got that now. I read his comment. Yes, he's he's taken all the text of our podcast live stream thing mushed it in a blender and come out with that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I think we should start coming to an end at some point soon, because if people yeah. want to listen to this back, there's going to be quite a lot for them to listen to. So, Hello, uh, by the way, if you're listening to, have to this. We cell walls time. in the game, David, um, and other stuff like that, so yeah, you'll be able to um, like harden, like have bones or or have, uh, what's it called? Tendons or whatever. Ah. Cartilage. Why couldn't I think of that? Um, and such. Uh, Dinochus is trying to ask questions. Uh, Karanu, do you think you can? Uh... Uh, is, well, if he's from. Brazil, that's going to be Portuguese, and Crodnu's from Uruguay, which is 
Spanish. Oh, not Crado. Who is the one from Brazil? I'm so confused. <sighs> uh, Green Guru. Uh, though, if, though Crado might be able to just self-read at least a bit. No, Spanish no, you won't be able to read it at all. Like we don't, we don't need a translator. We have Google oh, Translate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, oh, Crado is saying he can read it. So apparently, yeah, That's Spanish and Portuguese are not that are not that dissimilar from what I understand. Especially like uh, South American Portuguese and Spanish. Oh, he's. they say, I'm only here because I'm waiting for the game to be released and because I follow it myself without understanding anything. Um, oh, so he hasn't understood, understood anything that we've said. Oh, okay. Okay. I feel bad. Oh. Okay. Um, did anybody speak Portuguese here? Could say something <laughs> back that he would understand? Afraid not. I think we're making a big deal out of this when... <laughs> sorry. If, if you understand any of this, sorry. Bogdan705, uh, see you. Good night. Um, we probably should wrap up. Yeah, I think... Yeah. Guys, uh, Big Mr. Hayes in good. I have no idea. I think it's <laughs> what it's someone here pretending to be someone else. But like they have all kinds of different uh roles. Like there are developers and and alt account roles. So they don't even have a team. Um I bet you it's not the GDD's alternative account. I think it might be stealth. He's he's in stealth mode. <laughs> hey, See, I think told them then I think they can. Okay. Everyone else good with that? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. And uh, I don't know, uh, allowing us to deviate so much. To be fair, we, we were on track for quite a bit, so it's fine. People will listen yeah. to that first bit and think these people know what they're on about. <laughs> and then yeah, they'll think this is, this is a bit long. I'll give up listening now. <laughs> and they'll give up before they get to the last hour or so. So I think we're good. Thanks, everyone. Um, if you all want to say goodbyes. Bye. Uh, goodbye. Also, yes, Frank. Colors will have an effect on gameplay. Bye. <laughs> they better go. Tell your friends to join the team so we can actually make the game. Yes, that too. Oh yeah, like, if you have the skills, join the team. We need everyone, everyone join us, please. <laughs> Alright, so let's, shall we wrap up then? Yep. Alright. Okay, I'll stop the stream now. <laughs>